Ugh. Oh, what a way to start a video. <laughs> hey there, YouTube. How's it going? Surreal Canine here with more of the Sky 4. Promise Revisited. The last set of character demos we did were the extra stage characters, as well as uh, some other stuff you got early on in the game. This time, we are going to be doing all the... Uh, all of the mid and late post-game characters, those being the guys you get for clearing the various uh, post-game scenarios, as well as the uh, as well as the super secret stuff. <clears throat> okay, let's get started. First up, everybody's favorite vampire, Tyrant Valvatorez, with his uh, good old 10 million attack power, <laughs> or 100 million rather. Excuse me. Anyway, let's check out his other stats. He uses sword and spear skills, uh, learning six of each, and maybe the tier nine sword skill. I don't quite remember. <laughs> uh, he's one of my most used units, so uh, you can kind of see his uh, abilities here, which have uh, seen a lot of boosting through the character world, but uh, he is all about attack power. And he gets a free one and a half times boost to his aptitudes just from his ability here, Tyrant. <coughs> it's pretty amazing, really. He has the highest aptitudes in the game because of this ability right here. Maxing out at 450%. That said, let's check out his other abilities. We have two of them. This is uh, this is something he learned through the character world. No Life King uh, transforms uh, defeated enemy units into neutral units with one HP. It might come in handy. Uh, more often than not for me, though, it just got in the way. <laughs> Power of Eros increases stats by 20% per adjacent female ally unit. But perhaps the most broken ability here is Prideful Comrade. Just surround him with guys in the campaign HQ and boom, instant plus 80% to, to all his stats. This guy right here is the reason I was able to uh, just cheese ball the way I did. <laughs> And for that, I will be grateful. Now, let's show off what he is capable of. Granted, you all have probably seen uh, all of his stuff by now, but it's no reason not to include it here in the character demos. So let's send him out. Here I go! Here I go. Also, uh, I should probably turn ally effects back on. First up. Tyrant Sweep. It's uh, like Impaler Prince, but stronger. Or at least it's got a higher area of effect. Restores his HP. Nothing too surprising there. Blood Sting, which we uh, kind of saw when we were showing off Valvatores in the Full power Valvatores knows what's up. The power of a demon. He's still so, so quiet, though. Come on, Val. Next, Demon Emperor, C level attack with the with an even bigger area of effect than Tyrant Flugood, or however you pronounce that. Still don't know. Oh, 
For a second, I was like, did the game just crash? But uh, maybe that's a good signal that I should save. <laughs> Still the 10th anniversary of Homestuck. <laughs> I don't know. Got some free time finally, so why not uh, just record a bunch of things? Next up. The final boss, Nemo. When a turn ends, take 10% of adjacent... Well, first things first. Uh, Nemo sucks. <laughs> He and Des, he, Hugo, and Des X were just kind of thrown in, uh, for no particular reason. Uh, Nemo, you unlock by, uh, clearing episode three of the Fuka and Desco show. Tyrant Val, you unlock by clearing the fourth, uh, flashback stage. Anyway, he has no weapon fortes. Uh, his aptitudes are fine, I guess, but he only gets a single special attack, which is a, a, a B-level thing with a very weird uh, area of effect. These are two of his abilities. Devour Lord, uh, take 10% of an enemy's remaining HP when the turn ends, and Malice of Confusion, which uh, returns 10% of the damage you take to the attacker. He does not have any other abilities. So yeah, Nemo sucks, and we should just uh, get this over with and move on. Dirty demons. If you've seen the final boss, you've probably seen this attack anyway. Oh, that was a very, uh, that was a very long attack animation, but I am not particularly impressed. Next up, we have Sister Artina, who I actually, uh, was not, did not know how to unlock until today. Evidently, she's not necessary for the Nether Battle Tournament. But anyway. <clears throat> you unlock Artina by passing a, by clearing the... Uh, time leap episode, the entire time leap scenario, and then having Valvatores pass a bill for a hundred mana to bring back Sister Artina. Like Nemo, she has no uh, weapon fortes, but what she does have is a whole lot of healing potential. Increase ally stats by 10%, decrease enemy stats by 10%, so, uh, that's pretty nice. Palpation reverses the damage of, I'm assuming, her normal attacks. So, just by whacking a guy with her staff, she can heal them. As you can see, her aptitudes favor, uh, magic and healing. Nothing too surprising there. She learns all six healing spells, as well as Espoir, Braveheart, Magic Boost, and Target Lock. Her, uh, her specials here favor uh, resistance, which I guess we'll have to see what exactly those do. As for her other abilities... Last Rites. Upon defeat, she casts Kerplunk. That's pretty much exactly what she does. If you don't know what Kerplunk is, play some Dragon Quest. You will... F Ooh, uh, also, uh, in addition to fully healing, she doubles everyone else's stats. 
That's some pretty good stuff you got there, Artina. I approve. Let's take her to reincarnation site and uh, show you her specials. I'm assuming these are all going to be healing specials, but uh, we'll find out. Holy Barrier. God, hear my prayer. Yep. That's fine. Self defense. Wind element, evidently, and this one does damage. Hey, that was pretty cool. None punishment. B level, a uh, ring shaped area of effect. Let's see what's up. Let's pray. God, give us the skies. Hear the voices of the earthlings. I can't hear a thing you're saying, Altina. <laughs> but I imagine it's pretty cool. Alright, so that was Sister Artina. Uh, I got her way too late for her to be useful to us, but, uh, she's there. Next up. Hugo. You unlock Hugo by clearing episode 2 of the Fuka and Desco show. He's pretty much a... He's pretty much a the recolored death. He's got a... He's got a couple of monster skills here, as well as two magic change skills. He magic changes to a bow. As you can see, his aptitudes favor magic. And these are his abilities. Death magic. 10% chance of an instant kill when using magic. Decrease enemy heal effects by 50%. Double enemy SP consumption. And 10% of current SP added to intelligence if monster weapon is equipped. Pretty nice, I suppose. I mean, if you like deaths, uh, why not use Hugo? Let's send him into battle and see what's up. Death Seas. F level. Okay, you do have an Arsene attack equipped. Cool. You guys are gonna knock each other out, seriously. Remote Trail. Star element inflicts deprave, and it's an E class uh, special. Keeper of Abyss. C level, star element, also inflicts deprave. Hey everyone, we're 
playing Super Meat Boy. Okay, that was pretty cool. <clears throat> Let's show off his magic change skills. Let me show you. Val, we are going to need you to uh, help us here. He magic changes to a bow, as we have said. And this is what he does. Uh, what does he do? Right, F level, uh, inflicts sleep. Okay, that's actually kind of adorable. And very ridiculous. Drop out. C level, a uh, X shaped area of effect and quite a big range. Let me show you. Let's see what it does. Whoa, that, that's kind of that's kind of freaky there, Hugo. But uh, yeah, that was Hugo. All right. Next up, we have Nagi Clockwork, who is unique to the uh, PS Vita version of the game. You get her by clearing the time leap episode. Although within the time leap episode, you can use her before then. Anyway, Nagi's uh, weapon fortes here are lying to you. She likes guns and axes, learning seven of each. Her uh, abilities, or not her abilities, her uh, aptitudes here uh, seem to favor guns. Her, uh, her core ability here, everyone's mechanic, uh, synergizes pretty well with uh, Tyrant Val's. Ability, just in case you can't quite get that 10 million or 100 million rather <laughs> Keep saying 10 million because it's the title of a video game Clean mechanic uh, raises hit stats even higher, which is pretty nice. I guess What are her other abilities? favorite mark increased damage of weapon skills That's pretty nice, I guess All right, I have not actually used Nagi before, so let's see what she is capable of. Stop the war! Gears Woodpecker. <laughs> These bees are going pretty crazy at this fish outside my window. Next up, Panzer Parrot. That is that is just a very silly name for an attack. Why does she have a sardine on her tank? That's just absurd. <laughs> I mean... They, well, I don't know. No, it actually doesn't make sense. Steam Peacock. Eh. Why are all of her, uh, why are all of her skills named after birds? I 
I think the neighbors are having a party. <laughs> you can hear all their kids screaming. That's uh, that's definitely something. Uh, I don't want to close my window because I like having fresh air. At least when it's not freezing cold outside. Alright, anyway. What were we doing? We were doing the next guy, who is... Prinny Curtis! A pretty cool guy, if I do say so myself. To unlock Prinny Curtis, you have to uh, you have to encounter him probably five times in the item world in innocent towns, and then pass a bill. As for what he does, he magic changes to a gun. He uh, bundle attack lets him uh, do more damage when there are empty panels in his special attacks. Earth Hero's gun and Earth Hero's sword uh, boost his damage. Uh, by the amount of missing HP and SP, respectively. Pretty cool, really. He does not have other abilities. As for his uh, aptitudes, if I can uh, get to him, he seems to favor uh, physical and magical attacks equally, but being a prinny, uh, I'm not the two sub. I would not be uh, too disappointed if you just decided to give him a red monster weapon. Let's show off what he's capable of. This is it. This is it. Electron explosion. F level fire element. Pretty cool. Got some pretty cool stuff going on as a printy. Final arm. No target. Uh, huh. Going to have to uh, get kind of uh, uncornered here, I think. Actually, does he explode when you throw him? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Curtis. Attack zone obstructed. Crazy town. Oh, whatever. We'll just uh, lord him out with Peta, I guess. Probably should have put one of my spare accelerators on all these guys. I don't know. This is just silly. I would never lose. There we go. It doesn't even fit on his flippers, does it? <laughs> Pringer Beam. B level, star type, and it hits all around him. Very impressive. Now, let's show off his magic change skills. Let me show you. Whoops. I've been through too much. That was good. His uh his gun form just looks like a recolored printy gun. Twin rocket punch. Let me show you. Got the final arm and the final final arm. <laughs> Sonic.
Sonic Fire. What does Sonic Fire do? C type, non elemental. Time shenanigans, gotta love them. Of course, uh, one might ask uh, how he's able to do time shenanigans when he's not Peta. To that I say, your face. <clears throat> Alright, next up, we have Peta, the daughter of Zeta. Her weapon fortes are bows, guns, and staves. She, uh, let's see here. She learns, uh, seven gun skills, six bow skills. Does she also learn magic, or did, what is the deal with her staff, uh, forte there? I guess not. I guess the game is just lying to me. Alright, as for, uh, as for Peta's, uh, stuff. We can kind of see that her, uh, her aptitudes favor guns. All adjacent allies attacks and magic gain two more panels in range. So, uh, I assume if she is next to a guy, they could, uh, melee up to three tiles away, which is pretty nice. Badass Daughter increases stats of adjacent ally overlords by 30%. Uh, Future Me, think you could, uh, edit that in, just who it affects. Thanks. Alright, anyway. Her other abilities... She has one. Critical point. When not next to foes, critical and base damage increase by 20%. So uh, she's definitely a ranged fighter here. Being said, let's see what else she is capable of. To the reincarnation site. Azure Prison, F-Class, Non-Elemental. Whoops. No, you know what, this is fine. I won't go that was pretty cool. Peta Beam. Her daddy taught her this beam. C Class Star Element. The power of Anaglyph 3D! Finally, we have Time Drive. Ooh, S Class. <laughs> time travel is easy. Regular Dave Strider there, aren't you, Peta? <laughs> I like. Anyway, uh, bang, you're dead. Next up, we have the badass freaking overlord himself, Zeta, as soon as I find him in the menu. Wrong menu. 
attack with the highest stats when using a special skill. So, uh, if we wanted to, for example, give him a gun, he would still use his attack stat for uh, determining uh, damage. I'm assuming that's what it means. His weapon fortes are swords and spears, learning seven sword skills and six spear skills. Uh, this ability, ultimate power, raises his attack on odd turns and int on even turns. So uh, he's kind of a mixed attacker, I guess, which is pretty cool. Let's check out his other ability. Strongest body, defense up on odd turns, resistance up on even turns. Not quite as useful as ultimate power, but it's still pretty handy. If you want to, like, make him a healer or something for some reason. <laughs> Alright. Let's see what Zeta can do. Now that he is not a book. Neo Zeta Beam! So uh, let's see his other skill. Badass Overdrive. Double S class. So I believe the strongest class. Unless there's a triple S, but I would be surprised if there was a triple S. Create a black hole inside him. Crazy town. Okay, that was Zeta. Finally, we have a guy we have not really seen since, uh. Well, since ever. <laughs> we get to finally see his original form in action. As soon as I find him. King Krachevskoy, Laharl's father. Overlord Spirit increases the damage of specials by 50%, like Laharl, but better. Anger Limit increases his stats every time damage is taken. Doesn't Laharl also have that? His aptitudes are fists and, or his fortes are fists and swords. He learns six fist skills and seven sword skills. His other ability, Ruler's Discretion, gives him a 50% chance to evade an attack when the attacker's HP is low. Uh, can we compare that against Laharl? Did I put Laharl away? I put Laharl away. Oh well. <laughs> so it sounds like he is like Laharl, but better. That's nice, I guess. I still have to say, though, Laharl, or Tyrant Valatoris is uh, kind of being our best guy. Witness my true power. Freezing Knuckle. I tried to relive the moment my son was born. Majestic Shot. Star Element C Class. I 
That was pretty neat. Uh, very reminiscent of uh, one of the mid boss's attacks. Which I guess makes sense considering who this guy is. <laughs> Blazing Rush. B class. Non elemental. Let's see it. Pretty cool. But considering this is the last character you would normally get, unless you're an idiot like me and didn't get Artina, uh, there isn't really much to do with him. I mean, uh, Tyrant Val is still uh, kind of better for uh, beating Ball. <laughs> oh well. That's what we got, I guess. Thank you all for watching. Uh, next time, we are going to uh, cover the first half of the DLC characters. See you guys next time.